Think about OpenAI's cost of seven billion dollars of operating costs in 2024. DeepSeek probably operated with two percent the operating expense. So with that kind of formidable competitor, I think uh, Sam Altman is probably not sleeping well. Yeah, well he so that was Kai Fu Lee. And this guy is a prominent figure in AI and technology entrepreneurship who actually currently serves as the CEO of Cinovation Ventures, a venture capital firm he founded that manages $2.5 billion in assets developing high-tech Chinese companies. Now, this guy isn't just some incredible investor. He's also the founder of zero one.ai an AI startup launched in July, 2023. And he's had leadership positions at Google, Microsoft, Apple. And this guy has established himself as an influential voice in AI development, often referred to as the Oracle of AI. He has books, including the AI superpowers, AI 2041, which explore the future impact of AI. And so this guy isn't just some random person giving an interview. It's actually a very established businessman and well-respected entrepreneur talking about the state of artificial intelligence. Now, the clip that you just saw was a short snippet from an interview in which he's talking on Bloomberg about the state of AI. And of course, you can see he says that Sam Altman is probably not sleeping very well. Now, I do understand exactly where he's coming from. The deep seek drama has been absolutely incredible in this clip because it was something that I don't think anyone really saw coming. Now, whether or not DeepSeek did lie about how expensive their model is, I think that is besides the point. But I want you guys to watch this full clip because the implications of what he's saying are certainly true. And of course, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that it's already having, you know, certain impacts on how OpenAI are changing their actual company structure. So take a look at this full clip, which I'm going to dissect in a moment. In both US and China, the pre-training of a giant model has consolidated and is consolidating. And it's become clear that open source will be the winner. Um, there's still many that will not concede, right? OpenAI, Anthropic, who build their businesses believing they can build a better closed model than everyone else. I think they got shocked when they saw a model as good. If you think about OpenAI's cost of seven billion dollars of operating costs in 2024, DeepSeek probably operated with two percent the operating expense. So the issue really isn't whose model is one percent better. I think they're all very good. But the issue is, is OpenAI's model even sustainable, right? I mean, you're spending eight, seven billion dollars a year making a massive loss. And here you have a competitor coming in with an open source model that's for free. And that company also is infinitely, uh, infinitely uh, lasting because this founder has enough money to fund it at the current level and has reduced the cost of computing by a factor of five to ten. So with that kind of formidable competitor, I think uh, Sam Altman is probably not sleeping well. Yeah, well so it was definitely a rather interesting clip. You can see at the end of the interview, there's actually a smirk on his face because, of course, he makes the comment that Sam Altman is probably not sleeping well. And honestly, I think it's really interesting to see some of the moves OpenAI has pulled. If we take a look at what they've done recently, we can see that OpenAI called DeepSeek a state-controlled chatbot, and it actually called for a ban on PRC-produced models. Now, this is something that I will say is 50-50 in terms of it being true, and of course, in terms of there being a massive incentive for OpenAI to do this, because of course, we know that if DeepSeek does get banned, that helps out OpenAI a ton. You can see that they actually called the Chinese lab DeepSeek a state-subsidized and state-controlled and recommend that the US consider banning these models from the outfit and similar PRC supported operations. Now, it isn't just a completely baseless claim because DeepSeek does require under Chinese law to, you know, submit certain data when they do have requests for certain demands for that user data. But I think what will probably happen if anything does happen is that DeepSeek will probably only be banned on government devices and probably not anything else. So this move from OpenAI to say that, look, this is Chinese owned, operated and controlled, whilst it does have some kind of grounds, I think a lot of people are looking at this move as a rather strategic move to sort of wipe out the competition. And honestly, you can't blame them for doing that. Now, the craziest thing about all of this is that 
this isn't the only problem that OpenAI are facing. DeepSeek, of course, is coming in with cheaper prices. And at the end of this interview, one of the things that we can actually see he stated was the fact that the models are actually all consolidating. And this is something that is evident if you pay attention to the benchmark. So recently, there was a model called DeepSeek RV3. And DeepSeek V3 actually got a significant improvement. So this is the artificial analysis leaderboard. This is the artificial analysis intelligence index for non-reasoning models, models that do not think before answering. And this index incorporates seven evaluations spanning reasoning, knowledge, math, and coding. And this shows us that at the time of recording this video, it probably may change when you are watching this because the AI industry does move quite rapidly. But DeepSeek V3 had an update to where it pushed it to be the state of the art model in terms of the non reasoning model. Now, this was, I think, around a week ago. And since then, several models have updated to surpass it just a little bit. But the point is, is that this is a serious problem if you are OpenAI from just purely a model standpoint, because not only are they managing to outcompete in terms of the non-reasoning model, it's also probably something that is a lot less cheaper than the competitors, which of course is going to factor in into how people decide which models they use to deploy in various applications. And API usage actually makes up a significant portion of OpenAI's revenue. So it will be interesting to see you know, in next year's financials, how the company has managed to change that. So I do think that this, you know, for me, at least was probably bigger news than DeepSeek V3, because this was, you know, better than Grok 3, GPT 4.5, Gemini 2, 3.7 Sonnet, in terms of this AI benchmark, which is an independent evaluation. Now, I personally don't use DeepSeek that much. I've tried it. And among many other chatbots, it does seem a bit generic. For me, I haven't managed to put it into any workflow, but I do know many individuals that do actually use the model on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, like I said before, this model was more impressive than R1 because you can see right here when they spoke about this, you know, someone tweeted that this is arguably more impressive than DeepSeek R1 and potentially indicates that R2 is going to be a significant giant leap forward. So the reason that this is so crazy is because a lot of people are going to think that, you know, if DeepSeek V3 is this good, what is R2 going to look like in terms of that base model? And if you don't know already, DeepSeek have discussed actually getting the base model out by April. And they are really trying to rush those models out because they want to really dominate the AI space. So they didn't realize that they were going to capture the AI mindshare. But now that they have, they've spoken about releasing this model even sooner than they anticipated. So if we're seeing jumps from DeepSeek V3 all the way to the frontier, some people argue that, you know, DeepSeek R2 and the next base models could be state of the art in terms of the application. So some people are stating that this DeepSeek V3 version is going to be the base for R1 and R2 when released could be better than O3 mini and other reasoning models that currently exist. So it will be very interesting to see where this space is at the end of the year, because with multiple contenders now trying to be the state of the art model across these benchmarks and dropping the prices, of course, that leads these companies to implementing some changes. Now, like I said, I spoke about this in yesterday's video. OpenAI didn't really abandon the AI race, but they revealed some major major changes with as to how they're structuring the company. If you missed this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick summary on what I said. Basically, in this interview, Sam Altman, you know, he acknowledges the fact that like there are tons and tons of models and they're all kind of consolidating around the same point. The interviewer spoke about how LG released a new model and they spoke about there's a lot of state of the art models. So what are you going to do? And he basically says, look, it's like the transistor when the transistor was, you know, initially created. It was expensive. Only a few companies could make them. And now they're everywhere, pretty much in every phone. And he says that it's probably going to be the same with LLM. So what they're focusing on now at OpenAI is not really state-of-the-art models. They, of course, will have state-of-the-art models so that they can deliver incredible products. But there is a lot to be said about delivering a good customer experience. Take a look at what he says 
when discussing what will be more valuable in five years. You can see it says, what is going to be more valuable in five years? A 1 billion daily active user destination site that doesn't have to do customer acquisition or the state of the art model. And Sam Altman says the 1 billion user site. Now, you have to remember that OpenAI, they've shifted their focus. If they were just a AI research lab that is focused on frontier AI research, then sure, you could say that this is a big issue, but they are now a tech company. And tech companies have two main objectives. Number one, to make money. That's the bottom line. Growth and money, that is the bottom line. These companies want to grow year on year and year. And of course, number two, they want to have as many users as possible. So of course, Frontier AI models, I don't think OpenAI would care that much if they had Frontier AI models, provided that they were making the lion's share of income and they had a billion users on their site every single day. And I think over time, we're probably going to see that that is probably going to be a lot of other companies focus too, as they start to deploy these AI systems. But either way, I think it is very interesting that he made this statement. So if you guys did enjoy this video, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and let me know what you think about the AI race. Are things shaping up as you thought, or are things getting a bit too hectic?